what's up everybody so got a lot of Falcasi videos currently so now oh my gosh we're currently going to Tamiano's uh, presentation at the Falcasi Heritage Symposium I'm excited to see the symposium um, shout out to Norel uh, one of our friends who helped put it together so let's go <laughs> Mr. Kerr is a rower for the Segundo Armando Tour from Tomo. He has been rowed for the past four years. He's currently rowing in the second seat of the Segundo Fantasi. Camiano is a uh, young businessman, owner of the Pacific Roots clothing brand, and also helps with his family farm in Marotara, an island flower by Ayana. Camiano represents the rise of youth participation in Fantasi rowing. And he's here today, today to share his experience with us as we look forward to the future of the Fantasy Sport. Yep, but it's my more time to... Uh, uh, this presentation today is dedicated to the Marco Dynamite from us of Marcus Potassi and Peter Achim. Um, their hearts and village pride towards Fama Soma and the Isula crew will never be forgotten. May they rest in peace. Greetings, Salo, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tamiano Gur. I am the son of Peter and Donna Gur. I'm 27 years old, and for the past four years, I rode for the Isula Olive 1 and 3. And we represent the proud village of Fama Soma, as you can see over here for uh, some of my crew. Disclaimer today, I speak only for myself. Um, I know I'm one of the youngest presenters, so I also hope to be a strong voice and properly represent the youth of American Samoa as a whole. Now, our village of Pomatomo has always had such a rich and strong history dating back long before I was born. However, my topic today is entitled Racing to the Future, Racing and Sustainability with a Focus on the Youth. I hope everyone listening today can digest what I speak on with an open heart and mind, but still just take it with a grain of salt if you may. I want everybody to think for a second. What is Faltasi Racing to you? More than just a highlighted annual Flag Day celebration. Faltasi Racing is more than just a fun village sport. To me, Faltasi season as a whole is an art form, symbolically representing a pure celebrated aspect of our respected Samoan culture. I know not everybody sees it that way, but if you take a step back from the outside looking in, you'll see that there are many life-changing positive impacts that surround the art of Valtasi season. There's a quote that says, it takes a village to raise a child. I say, it takes a family to raise an individual, and then it takes a village to unite that individual strength together. That is how Valtasi effectively moves on the water. Our strength comes only in numbers united as one. Now when I say strong, I don't mean muscles and pure strength, although that definitely helps on race day. What I mean is, when you spend one third to one fourth of your year, day in and day out training for this one race every April, you grow. You see, most official Faltasi races only last about a half an hour. But there are hundreds of hours of sacrifice that happen before race day. Oftentimes, many people outside, maybe even inside the respected village, don't always see the sacrifices that are made by each rower. Financial sacrifices, spiritual, emotional, physical sacrifices. In 2014 and 2015, through countless events, while my soul fundraised about $300,000 to build the boat you see right here. In 2016, our village dedicated and launched our new boat. Most boats have anywhere from 36 to 49 seats. On Somo, we have 38 seats, 38 rowers. We started training at the beginning of January 2016. I still remember it like it was yesterday. 128 kids showed up to practice that first day, all craving to be a part of the street. We started with five trainings a week, every day after work. We'd usually start around 4.15 and train two out for about two, two and a half hours. No water breaks or bathroom breaks were allowed to after practice. Five trainings a week turned into six trainings a week. Six trainings a week turned into 12 trainings a week. 4 a.m. and 4 p.m., 12 a week, which led into our village Moikasi five weeks before the race. 
This is also known as village lockdown. Five weeks of living in Thomas home. United, the crew sleeps as one together all in a church hall. It doesn't matter if you're married, it doesn't matter if you have kids, everything else is sacrificed all in the spirit of Balsasi. We wake up before 4 a.m., have our morning prayer, we do our morning training, we have a quick breakfast, get excused for work, we come back again at 4 p.m., roll till it's dark, we quickly come back in, have evening prayer, share dinner, shower, lights out at 9 p.m., and start again before 4 a.m. the next day. Seven days a week, five weeks leading up to the race. I've played multiple sports my entire life and kept fit. However, Kautasi training is different. There were days where I drank the sweat off my shirt just to keep myself from fainting. By April, what started as 128 crew members, only 45 were left. Only 45 could handle the training and sacrifices. However, remember we only have 38 seats on this boat. So there were seven crew members who couldn't even row in the final race. Think about it, to train for four months Wake up before 4 a.m., train again at 4 p.m. for five weeks straight, four months straight, only to not get picked to roll on the final race day and still be okay with that? That's true village pride. It's brotherhood. It's teamwork. It's unity and sacrifice. However, in 2016, there were too many boats competing, so they split the teams in half. We had two heats, two races where the best teams advanced to the finals, but there never was a final race. The wind and the ocean currents were too rough. Palm was sunk on the initial day. The race was caught off and we had to redo it the next day. More miscommunication ensued the next day in bad weather. So when we finally raced, it was inside the harbor and we crashed into Palm right before the finish line. Other events happened to other village crews as well and five boats were eventually disqualified. The final race was eventually called off by the governor and all participating boats were given $10,000 to split as a price compensation. For our crew, that wasn't enough. We just wanted a fair and full race. We just wanted to win. We didn't care about $10,000. I mean, what's $10,000, $300,000? Why sacrifice hundreds of hours up to 12 trains a week only to catch them? It was a stab in the heart to the crew and extremely disheartening to all crews, not just our village. The next year, less of us showed up. There's one row in our crew that has been rowing since 1998. He hasn't lost faith. He just wants to row and for us to win once. But that can't happen with the current conditions set in place. This is why, honestly, our favorite part of rowing for Fongus Homo has never been the race itself. It's the brotherhood. The bonds that are made for life with the crew. This is why I say it's bigger than just a sport. It doesn't matter that I wasn't born and raised in Fongus Homo. I made countless sacrifices for our village and have been respected for that. Regardless of this experience's gain and fill, the momentum for Fautaki race has definitely died down over the past couple of years. What can kids participate in inside their villages outside of Fautaki season? What government programs are available for kids and young adults to participate in mentally and physically? There needs to be more cultural history and documentation that needs to be implemented inside and outside the classroom. It's true, character is built through composition. The character is also built throughout life. Our youth need a stronger voice in American Samoa. I think the government needs to step in and cater more towards our youth. We talk about it, but the actions don't really match our words. We as a whole island need more after school programs. American Samoa youth need better access to resources. Our kids need more things to do not just programs that come and go when grant funding finishes. We need better accountability efforts to sustain not only Faltasi races, but for the future generations of American Samoa. I think Faltasi training and racing is one of the ultimate rites of passage for every young adult in American Samoa. So for the kids that have never rode, but want to, I highly encourage them to try it out. 
because it's one of the best decisions that I've ever made, and I hope you will make it soon. Okay, so we just finished. Um, well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> we just finished. Anno just finished eating. Eating. Oh well, yeah, but he just finished uh, presenting at the symposium, and he symposium symposium. He killed it. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, but he's gonna make a difference by you know being completely open and honest with the people that were there. That they're pretty influential people, right? Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that beautiful speech of his makes an impact and maybe you guys learn something as well because I know I learned some but did you. good job um, so hope you guys enjoyed that video hit the subscribe button the like button share button whatever you would like um, until next time Tova.